Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Swetana? To in this tutorial, I'll be showing you high-end skin retouching from the very start to the very end with no step skip. So stick around and simply like this video. And don't forget to subscribe if at all you are watching and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, so you can see the before, after, before, after. So basically, frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that is going to bed the image into the high frequency layer which contains the textures and the low frequency layer which contains the colors. So just come the background and create those two layers by pressing Ctrl J and name this layer to color and I'll name the up layer to textures. So just double click to rename that to textures. So after renaming that, just come to the texture layer and hide it and select the color layer right here and come to filter blend, come down to Gaussian blend. This is the most important step when it comes to frequency separation. So you click on an area that has textures in your image. And after clicking on it, it's going to open up in the preview of the Gaussian Blur window right here. Then come the radius and simply left click and drag that up. And you have to stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image. So, around, so just stop at around 5. That is when I'm just starting to lose out on textures. So your radius may be different depending on the amount of details or skin textures that you're dealing with in the image that you want to edit using frequency separation. So mine is at around 5. That is when I'll stop. So... You stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image and just come right here and simply click OK. Select the texture layer and now activate it. Then come to image and come down to apply image. So my image is 16 bit. So usually we have different bit depths for photos in Photoshop. We have 8 bit and 16 bit. So I'll just come and select the color layer because we want to extract the textures from the color layer. And now just come and change the blend mode to add make sure the opacity is 100 percent the scale is two offset so and make sure i turn on the invert option and you see the textures on this gray layer but if i told you you're working with 8-bit image simply change the, the blame mode to subtract the scale is two offset 128 and make sure the invert option is not turned on and you see the textures on this gray layer right here but mine is 16-bit so i'll just switch back to add the scale is two offset zero and simply invert so just come the blame and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light to get back the image it was meant to be so just come to these two layers and left click and control so you control and click on both to select both layers and drag them into the group icon put them in a group and you can rename this to fs for frequency separation so when you open up this group you can start we have divided the image into the textures and the colors and there is no difference between the initial image and our separated image. So just come right here and select the color layer. And after selecting it, just come and hide the texture or high frequency layer. So we want to get a tool that is going to first of all work on the skin tones or the colors in the image to blend them so that you can have a nice and smooth transition within those colors. And that tool is going to be known as the mixer brush tool. So just come under the brushes, right click and get the mixer brush tool. And if at all it is not under the brushes, you can simply right click right here and you choose the mixer brush tool. Mine is just right there. So for every setting for the tool you select in Photoshop, the setting for that tool is always going to be put right above here. So for a tool that you have chosen, that is a mixer brush tool, the settings are above here. So just come right here and make sure the hardness is at zero and make sure clean brush is selected. Make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke has been selected. The weight we are going to be using is 9%. Load 75, mix 90 and flat 100%. The mix is 90, flat 100%. Make sure sample orders is not selected because when you select this, it means that the brush is going to be commanded by Photoshop to sample information from also textures and can also paint back the textures in the color layer, which we don't want. Remember, we just want to perfect the colors or skin tones in this image. So after doing that, you can now slightly zoom in. So how to apply the mixer brush? To leave a toy, it is showing a plus icon. Make sure you press the caps lock key to get it back in its default size. So to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool, you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard to reduce or increase on the size of the mixer brush tool. And how to apply the mixer brush tool? You simply left click and hold down and you move the mixer brush tool to blend or mix colors that are looking alike in a given area for example this area right here you left click and hold down and you mix those colors until when you feel like they're blending quite well and when you feel like you have blended them and they are mixed quite well 
you release the left click button and you come and mix another area so that you can create a harmonious transition between those colors so I'll just come and blend those areas and you can see the image is turning out to look a little bit plastic but when you come and turn on the texture you can see the textures are still left intact within this image so just come and hide this so you have to take the strokes of the mesa brush tool in the direction of the way a given area is shaped so i'll just come and mix that area so i'm moving in an up down kind of direction and where these colors are transitioning from one color to another i'll reduce on the size by using the bracket key on the keyboard and also mix that color right there so when you're mixing or working using mesa brush tool always retouch at a distance because when you're doing that at a distance you can notice the uneven skin tone transitions in the image and you can work on them quite well or better and also help helps you rather to save time as you're trying to edit using frequency separation so you can see when comes to the cheek area reduce on the size and move the in the direction of uh, the cheekbone area you can see how i'm moving my brush just like that so just mix the colors just like that so i'll just forward this and i'll see you later on in this video and now welcome back and you can start we are now done working on the skin using the mr brush tool. and this is a before after before after but now we still have some blemishes in the image and as we're working using the mr brush tool we missed out some areas and we did not work on some areas so perfect the result simply come and get the lasso tool and make sure it is in new selection mode right here and also make sure the feathering is 22 pixels and make sure ant alias is selected so after doing that the reason for selecting feathering of 22 pixels because we don't want the edges of the lasso tool to leave that sharp edge from the selection so just come and make a selection so you have to keep away from selecting the edges of the image or even selecting the eyebrows or even the eyes so just select the skin and keep up from the edges of the image and after I just come right here to filter blur and come down to gush and blur remember we have now turned on the texture layer on this step so just multiply the radius that you had for your frequency pressure by three so whichever radius that you had for your frequency pressure just multiply it by three and type in that value so five by three is 15 or you can as well manually move this up to when you feel like you're getting a desired texture for your skin so just come and hit ok so you can see selections I'm making, I'm selecting the way a given area is shaped. So just coming and applying the Gaussian blur. And if at all it is too much, simply right click on the selection and simply reduce on the Gaussian blur using the fade Gaussian blur option. So just like that. And when it comes to the nose area, simply apply it on this other side of the nose just like that. And come to filter blur and come down to Gaussian blur. And also come this other dark side of the nose and... I would recommend that you don't apply it on the highlight area because that is going to flatten or make the nose look big than or bigger than it was meant to be in the original photo. So I'll just apply it. So this step is only applied onto the face. And you can say before, after, before, after. And now we have one final thing that is the blemishes or skin imperfection. Just come to the texture layer now, select it, and come and get the clone stamp tool. Then come right here and make sure the hardness is set to 0%. Make sure the mode is normal, opacity and the flat 100%. Make sure align the selected and the sample is set to current layer. So the texture layer selected, simply zoom, zoom in by pressing Ctrl or you can use Command Plus on the keyboard. So how to remove a blemish? Make sure that the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to eliminate from the image. So how to remove a blemish? You can hold down the Option key on the keyboard if at all using Mac. Then if at all using Windows, you can hold down the alternate key on the keyboard. So when you hold it down, simply left click on an area that is clean and that is near the blemish that you want to remove. So you hold down the option key or the alternate key on the keyboard and you left click on an area that is near the blemish. But make sure the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove. So you are going to copy clean skin from this area and paste it over the blemish to cover it with clean skin. So that is how you can use the clone stamp tool to remove blemishes. So I'll be forwarding this and I'll be seeing you later on in this very video.
And now you can see that we are done removing the blemishes from this remain. And this is a before, after, before, after. Now we are done doing the skin retouching using frequency separation. And anything is going to be saving the image. So in order to save the image so it doesn't change in color, after you post it or print it out, simply come right here to file, export, and come to export as. So when you come to export as, simply put in these settings. Make sure the format is set to JPEG because this is supported by most social media platforms. The quality at 100%. Make sure the resample is set to by Cubic Sharper because we want Photoshop to slightly sharpen the photo for us when we are trying to save it. Make sure the color space is set to convert SRGB and also embed, pro color, embed color profile. So with these two checks, simply hit export and choose the location where you want to save the image. And that, when you're done saving, this is going to automatically close and put you back into Photoshop. So this is how you can do skin retouching using frequency separation from the very start to the very end. So if I told you have enjoyed this, simply like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If I told you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.